Hello people, John Shaughnessy here again. How you doing? Another video here. This video is uh, basically about challenging the Milankovitch cycle and the, um, the lack of mechanics behind it. There's no real evidence to support the uh, changes that we're going to go over. Uh, the Milankovitch cycle ice age without mechanics, basically. I mean, it's all, you know, they have a lot of hypothetical, um, you know, movements uh, of going going on in this uh, system. And uh, amazingly enough, the whole physics community has adopted it, climatologists and astrophysicists and you name it. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, wrong. He was, he was right on, on his theories that if they did change in the way he, Basically explains in his theories that you would have uh, climate change, but what I'm what I'm driving home is that uh, it's uh, these are all hypothetical, um, you know, observations that uh, are not true. They're not true. And uh, my my theory is based on the moon, something you can see every day, and uh, you you've, you can see the gravitational effect that it has on the Earth. And in fact, the uh, the moon does control the ice age. Uh, based on the ice water ratio drags that um, we are, you know, that the, uh, you know, the moon has an effect on the uh, ice water ratios on the planet and will cause the tilt to change. So let's get into a couple of uh, quick explanations and uh, we'll move on down the road. All right, here's your um, basic uh, Milankovitch cycle of uh, driving the ice ages. He theories, theorizes that uh, the you know, the, the Earth's uh, elliptics orbit around the sun somehow magically, um, you know, goes into a, uh, a circle around the sun. Mind you, though, the, um, uh, you know, the uh, energy received is basically the same. Another thing, another thing that's uh, very alarming is whenever you see any of these videos on... Um, Anything with the sun uh, in the earth orbiting around the sun it, for whatever reason they have the sun is just giant It's just a massive ball and the earth's a little tiny dot well, and, and you know they, they should really uh, refrain from that because it, it It messes up your mind and, and how all these systems tie into each other and, and the actual energy being absorbed by the By the sun because in fact when you look at this thing right here That sun should be no bigger than our moon Okay, granted it is, you know, uh, whatever, a million times larger than the Earth, but because it's so far away, you need to uh, adjust the depth perception so everybody gets an idea of how uh, important the tilt is uh, with the, uh, in regards to the uh, weather changing on the Earth. Okay, so you can go in from an ice age into an interglacial on a tilt because Essentially, you're dealing with something the size of the moon in your atmosphere that is the uh, the sun's radiation. Uh, and just just another uh, observation. I'm here making observations. So, again, this is the uh, you know the basic standard uh, equation here, or or GIF, if you will, or diagram that uh, everybody's uh, basically in love with. You know, they just think they just can't get enough of it. They throw a bunch of graphs in. They throw a bunch of, um, you know, uh, timelines, and they 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 uh, you know squish graphs together. They overlap them into uh, ice core samples and all these other things. But they're all hypothetical. There's no real evidence that this has ever happened. Okay, so um, we're gonna go into uh, another one here. This is gonna the uh, three big uh, big ones that he. Uh, he outlines his eccentricity, basically that's the one we just watched, the eccentricity going from elliptic to orbit, uh, uh, circular, then back again. And then we have the uh, precession, which is, you know, uh, just the wobble of the planet. And that basically does have seasons in, in it also. That does affect the seasons on Earth. But it does not drive in the big seasons, the big ice ages, the big, uh, yeah, you know, the interglacial that we're in right now. And then you have the uh, the tilt. The tilt is the big one, obliquity. I call it the obliquity or the tilt. So that's the big one. That is the one that drives the ice age. That drives the uh, you know when you when you look at the moon in effect uh, 
the, the moon and you look at the sun as both the same size and out you know acting on our planet then you then you start to gain some understanding of the uh, the uh, difference in light that the planet will receive with a tilt because um, you know the the, uh, the uh, you know the average picture out there has a sun you know off the charts and you know you get the little tiny moon just sitting in a uh, little tiny planet earth just sitting in there completely baked from uh, pole to pole that's not the case you know it's a tiny little dot and you know 94 million miles away and um, in effect that that little dot is what's uh, you know shining the light on so it's just a little tiny light like this pen pen laser here it's a little tiny light just shining on the earth okay moving right along here this won't be too long um, let's see we have uh, a great gift here this is what the moon does this is the moon in effect, I'm going to zoom in on this one while I talk about it. Try to anyways. This is the, uh, the actual mechanics that we have every day uh, in our world. And maybe I just leave it alone. I'm screwing up everything. But um, anyways, yeah, I'll leave it alone. The, um, the fact of the matter is, Got to get a camera man one of these days. Old woman. Anyways, uh, the fact of the matter is, is this, this, uh, you have a moonless high tide, you have a moonless high tide, okay? So you have, you know, one side's got the moon high tide, the other side's got a moonless high tide. That's because the gravitational field is being manipulated by the moon. The moon is the strongest energy manipulator on the planet. I, I know... I know, you know, you got the sun with the, the solar energy, but as far as moving mass, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the, the moon is, you know, moving the, the tectonic plates you walk on twice a day. I, you know, it's, it's um, on the moonless side because, it, in effect, it's, it flexes the Barry Center, and if Barry didn't take it far, far enough, his uh, theory, that uh, it, it actually lowers the gravitational field on the opposite side of the moon, you know, same latitude. So, anyways... Uh, I don't want to get all uh, off topic. That's um, you know, if you get into my gravity theories, I got other vi videos on gravity and how how they actually work on on the Earth. But the fact of the matter is, is the uh, moon drags on the water. Okay, it's dragging on the water right now. They changed the uh, atomic clock. Uh, you know, added another second or something a few years ago, but. Again, more physical evidence. This is what I'm presenting as physical evidence as to why the moon is the driver of the ice age. Another thing is, eventually, we're going to hit the water maximum in our, in our water age, and, or you know, the interglacial period, whatever you want to call it. And you will, get, um, you will get a tilt change. It's going to start concentrating. Uh, the moon's gravitational field is going to start... Uh, you know, maxing out, hitting hitting its uh, maximum drag on the on the girth of the ocean, and that is going to cause the tilt to change from 23 and a half to a lesser degree tilt, 22, possibly down to 11. I, you know, uh, but it's going to change it. That's that's what drives the ice age. The uh, that's that's what drives an ice age into into uh, existence. Now, along with that. We go through a 104,000 year ice age, you know, and the average is 13,500 year interglacial, then we go into a 104,000 uh, year ice age according to the ice samples. And uh, once, once we go into ice building mode, the drag from the moon on the earth will transfer from the ocean as the ocean gets lower and lower and lower over time. It transfers on to the, uh, to the uh, you know, the uh, solid mass of the planet and um, the uh, ever ever enlarging ice sheets uh, in, in the polar caps start to grow, this, that, and the other thing. So, the northern hemisphere, the southern hemisphere, both um, you know have have an effect on it. But there's more mass in the northern hemisphere, and eventually you'll hit the uh, glacial maximum, and, and that will in fact tilt the Earth to the current uh, tilt of today, which is 23 and a half. And the little dot out there in the middle of our uh, solar system will shine some more light on us and we will go into a, a interglacial period. Anyways, it's uh, got to be my son putting that in there. And, okay, here's a, a good 
uh, you know, because it's a, a light, it's light, I'm going to be fading out a little bit. My camera's not that good. But uh, you can see this, this uh, graph right here. I'm going to make sure we get it into focus. I'm going to make sure that whole thing comes in on you because this actually kind of gives you a good um, uh, visual on the uh, interglacial period that we're in right now. This is the, uh, you know, the liquid earth, uh, water bulges um, away from the moon. Um, there's the moon. You got the, uh, you got the moon, you know, the moon side pulling the, um, the uh, ocean towards it. Again, you have the moon's gravitational pull on the ocean. And over time, you know, it's going to hit a maximum uh, peak there, and we are going to have a tilt change. So this is the this picture shows the Earth at the peak of the interglacial water age, no ice at the poles. At which point the Moon's gravitational field tug uh, on the greater ocean water mass, thus pulling the Earth into a, the ice age axial tilt position, which is a lower lower tilt. Because when you go to a lower tilt, you have less light shining on the poles, thus you go into ice building mode. Okay, uh, this is uh, the, these are. Observable, observable, repeatable, um, you know, physical facts that you can see. This is, this is, uh, you can put your hand on this thing. You see it happening every day, 24-7, 365. The mechanics are there. Unlike the Milakovic uh, cycle, there's no mechanics. There is no mechanics whatsoever. There's some theorized some mechanics that the big, mount, the big uh, pyramid, or the big, yeah, not the pyramids, the big, um, Planets have an effect in uh, on the earth and you know, but when you deal with gravity every action has an equal and opposite reaction When it comes to uh, the larger planets in the solar system and they're so far out from us. They're not controlling our tides Okay, I mean the only thing that really controls the tide is when the uh, is the moon But when the moon lines up with the Sun on the same side you get a little bit of a higher tide but in, it, it's it's very very minimal okay so it's the moon is the big the big tug the big player and it's always been it's always been all right this is a great uh, picture right here this picture shows the earth at the glacial maximum at the peak of the 104,000 year ice age at which point the moon's gravitational fields tug on the greater ice mass thus pulling earth into the interglacial water age axial tilt okay so that, that's what we're in right now. It's pulled us and now it's, you know, it's transferred from all the melting ice and it's transferring rapidly because of humans, humans, they were all humans, were having a large effect on the, uh, on the uh, ice melt. So uh, we're actually expediting the, uh, the tilt back to an ice age because of our uh, behavior. Again, these are uh, ice, ice samples and ice age uh, lasts approximately 100, 100,004 years and 13,500 years for interglacial period. This is the result of the Earth's tilts based on the ice water ratio in conjunction with the moon's gravitational drag on the ice or water mass percentage ratios. Okay, you don't need a formula for this stuff, you don't need to confuse it. Nothing against, um, you know, mathematicians, but mathematician rhymes with a few words one it rhymes with magician okay all right so you got to be aware of these things it also relies uh rhymes with um religion okay so mathematician i could do this all i don't even have to put this stuff up i can do my own equations and put up all you know i can stand in front of the chalkboard with five thousand other uh you know uh, different uh, you know uh, numbers and codes and uh, you know mathematical uh, symbology uh, to create equations to make this work, but what, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not following, falling into the trap of, uh, you know, the mathematical uh, bizarro world. I'm putting this out as simple as possible. A three-year-old can get it. It's a good theory, all right? It's not, it's not that complicated. It's not that uh, simple either. But um, again, it's, it, you can put your teeth into it. You can hold it. You can see it. Get out of the ocean and watch the tide go out and watch it come in, okay? It's, it's that simple. So these are the facts, just the facts, ma'am. All right, another thing unbeknownst to the uh, physics community, I, I'm, I'm kind of like busting out and, and creating my own, uh, you know, uh, laws of gravity, really. And, 
and theories on how the uh, spinning Earth relates with the uh, Moon. But anyways, the Earth three-phase gravity, land, and water signature interacting with the Moon's planetary gravity gears. Uh, the uh, I wrote a book. There is something about the Moon. That's the title. It's uh, T I S A T moonforward dot com and has all these graphs and uh, and uh, a lot more uh, you know obviously some uh, text that you can read up on it so I'm just giving it a, a real quick one solve but the uh, the moon the earth does have a gravitational signature that interacts interacts uh, with the uh, moon so and the moon also has a drag on the ice and ice water and the land masses this is a four phase at the end of the uh, at the end of the ice age or the uh, glacial maximum I should say the earth actually goes from a three phase signature to a four phase signature and a lot of this stuff is located in the ancient text scattered to the four corners of the earth so uh, I invite you to go check out my book I have a book trailer out there um, you know there is something about the moon there's a couple of other titles out there with the same thing I'm gonna have to change the title of that uh, not the book but uh, to the video or you just go to my YouTube channel uh, remember you know just like it uh, hit me up with some questions and um, you know really uh, you know let this sink in don't pull back you know I'm not talking about Bigfoot up here I'm talking about um, you know real science real physics and uh, you know it's nothing to be afraid of you know we need to um, we need to call these people out because it's it's getting dangerous out there to be going off the deep end on um, you know theories that don't have any any mechanics behind them. They they you have to have physics, okay? You you've got to supply the physics if you're gonna you know have all the institutions on the planet following it. You have to you have to have mechanics behind the uh, behind the curtain. You know you lift up the curtain. It's like okay, hello. Uh, you know the graphs are nice, the equations are nice, everything's wonderful. But you 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 have to have some historical evidence. You have to have something besides just uh, hearsay. Again, not putting down Milankovitch. He's a, a brilliant guy. He came from uh, the same um, world that uh, Tesla came from, same country. So uh, he his mind is he was a great mind, and uh, he came up with uh, all all his. Um, you know, in theories are actually pretty, uh, you know, right on if they did happen. Again, again, they, they, uh, the only thing that happens is the tilt. The tilt is what's happening. You have the, uh, you know, the uh, procession, but that's, that's, uh, you know, something between the earth and the sun, I believe. And it's a, a, lot, a lot smaller of cycle. So this thing is like, um, this in, in effect is the clock. This is, you know, the moon is the grandmother clock in my book, I, I, you know. I co-wrote with uh, Wendy Salter. That is the uh, the science behind the whole the whole mechanics of the um, you know the uh, the ice age and the um, water age, learning to glacial. So again, my name is John Shaughnessy. Don't forget to like my videos. All right, and uh, you know just just uh, let it, let it uh, seep in. You know I'm not se I'm not selling timeshares at uh, Guiana Jonestown here. I'm just throwing out the facts, just the facts. Observable evidence. I got more videos coming out. Got huge downloads the last couple of years. Got the uh, pyramids all figured out. A lot of other things that are coming through, and um, I got a backlog. Really, I got you know I got four or five books in my head that I I got to get on paper. So, peace out. Have a good night, or day, or evening. <laughs>